Finding Dory is about a fish who goes on a journey to find her parents. Is that a good summary of the movie? Okay, how about this? Finding Dory is about Nemo and Marlin trying to find Dory, who's trying to find her parents, who finds a lot of friends who help her along the way? Okay, how about this? Finding Dory is about Lev Vygotsky's sociocultural theory and why it's such an important theory for understanding the cognitive development of children. What do you think? Yeah, that's better. You down with DCE. Yeah, you know me. You down with DCE. Yeah, you know me. You down with DCE. Yeah, you know me. Who's down with DCE? Oh, no. In early childhood education classes, Jean Piaget and Lev Vygotsky are the two main cognitive theorists discussed, and their theories are very different from one another. Let's take a look at four principles of Vygotsky's theory and use the film Finding Dory to help us relate to and understand the theory. The four principles of Vygotsky's sociocultural theory we will examine are the child in activity in cultural context as a unit of study, the zone of proximal development, the intermental constructs the intramental, cultural tools mediate intellectual functioning. If we wanted to study Dory's cognitive capabilities, what would be the best way? Could we just focus on her and exclude those around her and ignore her environmental context? No! Child inactivity in cultural context as the unit of study is important for a few reasons. First, it emphasizes one of the key features of Vygotsky's theory, the socio-cultural context. We never exist in isolation. We are always either with other individuals or are physically in a cultural context. Therefore, Vygotsky would argue you cannot study a child's cognitive development without consideration of who they are with what they are doing, and where they are at. The second reason this principle is important is because it contradicts Piaget. Piaget did not emphasize the sociocultural context. For Piaget, the most important factor to consider a child's cognitive development was their biological age, because as a stage theorist, Piaget sorted children into cognitive stages based on ages. In contrast, Vygotsky stressed the importance of the socio-cultural context. The principle of child inactivity in cultural context as a unit of study means that you cannot just look at the child. Minimally, you need to consider what the child is doing and the cultural context where this activity is taking place. For Piaget, the unit of study was the child itself. But for Vygotsky, the unit of study must include the activity and the socio-cultural context as well. Dory's cognitive processes and behavior deferred based on who she was with and where she was at. With Hank, Dory ends up finding a map of the aquarium where she notices a purple shell, which leads her to a flashback and them deciding to follow the map to that location. So when studying this cognitive process from Dory, you have to consider who she was with, Hank, and the activity she was doing, reading the map. Or the scene where they need to stop a truck in traffic on a bridge. Who has the brilliant idea? Dory. But if you watch the scene, her idea is derived from something Bailey said, which leads her to think of something cute. And then she notices the cute otters near them. Bippity boppity boop, the idea is born. So to understand Dory's cognitive thought process in this example, you can see how important it is to consider those she is with, the current activity they are engaged in, and the cultural context. Perhaps the most well-known concept related to Vygotsky's theory is the zone of proximal development, especially as many educators have used this concept in pedagogical practices. According to Vygotsky, the zone of proximal development is defined as the distance between the actual developmental level as determined by independent problem solving, and the level of cognitive development as determined through problem solving, under adult guidance, or in collaboration with more capable peers. To illustrate, think about just about any scene from Finding Dory. 
Practically every character that Dory comes into contact with helps her achieve more than she could probably do independently. Dory has short-term memory loss, and while her spirit and just-keep-swimming mindset can take her far, when left to her own devices, she is only able to get so far. For example, take the role of Hank the Octopus. While Dory could independently problem-solve her way through some of the aquarium, with the help of a more capable peer, Hank, she's able to achieve even more. Importantly, Hank does not just take Dory's fin and directly take her to her destination. Rather, they continuously collaborate through the problem-solving process. Or how about when Dory was stuck in the pipes by herself? Independently, Dory was able to only go so far, but with the help of Destiny and Bailey, she was able to achieve even more. Educators use the term scaffolding to apply the zone of proximal development to education and learning. An educator can consider where a child's current independent ability is and then consider a challenge. To help the child through the challenge, the educator can scaffold the learning process by providing guidance, interactions, and support to help the child. Dory is known for her saying, just keep swimming. And in Finding Dory, we learn where that phrase originated from. Dory exhibited short-term memory loss when she was young and would often wander from home and struggle to find her way back. Her parents would sing to her, just keep swimming, in an effort to help her remember what she could do when she was lost. And just keep swimming, and eventually she will find her way back home. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, 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 swim. swim, swim. <laughs> My parents taught me that song. We sang it as a family. All this time I thought I made it up. What song? Just keep swimming. This is the perfect example of the third principle from Vygotsky's theory. The intermental constructs the intramental. What this principle means is what happens between people, intermental, eventually becomes what happens within the person, intramental. Dory's parents sang the Just Keep Swimming song with her, intermental, but it eventually became the guiding phrase Dory uses for herself, intramental. There is a common Vygotsky quote for this principle. Every function in the child's cultural development appears twice. First, on the social level, and later on the individual level. First between people, inter-psychological, and then inside the child, intra-psychological. Cultural tools mediate intellectual functioning. Principle number four. Cultural tools include such things as various systems for counting, mnemonic techniques, algebraic systems, works of art, writing, diagrams, maps, etc. But Vygotsky argued the most important is language. These cultural tools are psychological tools because they mediate cognitive functioning, meaning they allow us to reach higher cognitive levels than we would be able to reach without them. These tools can help control and modify our behaviors and our thoughts. Consider how systems for counting guide our mathematical processes, or how maps and diagrams control and streamline our navigation and thinking. Think about the cognitive change a two or three year old goes through due to the increase in their language abilities. Dory's famous just keep swimming phrase can be used here again as another great example of the power of language. When she uses that phrase for herself, it seems to help her cognitively control her emotions and her thoughts and refocus her behavior. Another great example is from the scene when Dory was young. Her parents implemented various cultural tools to help Dory during times of short-term memory loss. They collected shelves and would line them up side by side, starting from their home and ending far off in the distance. The end result was various lines of shelves stretching in various directions into the distance. The goal was to have Dory be able to use the shelves to guide her back home if she swam off and could not find her way back. I love this example as a cultural tool because the shells themselves are not inherently navigational tools. 
but Dory's family gave these cultural tools specific psychological power to help control and modify Dory's thoughts and behavior. Vygotsky's social cultural theory is rich with ideas, and the film Finding Dory is a cultural tool to help us understand his theory at a deeper level than we potentially could by simply reading about the theory independently.